Hi, welcome back to the Overland Legend. I'm Alan and thanks so much for watching. As promised in this video, I'm going to cover a very common conversion in a Series 1 and that's from a 2 litre engine to a 2.25 litre engine. Now even though it's so common, there really isn't a lot of information about it. That I only found out afterwards, so I thought this would be a very easy conversion. But, like all conversions, nothing is easy. You do get more complicated conversions and you get simpler conversions. But at the end of the day, a conversion is just that. It's something that's going to be complicated and there are going to be all sorts of things that you need to plan for and that you need to change because it's not a standard engine that was fitted in this vehicle. So I originally had the 2 litre engine in this vehicle and when I got the vehicle, we actually had the 2 litre engine. Um, which we then sold uh, because I really wasn't intending to use it at the time. It would have been nice to keep it for authenticity with hindsight, but for practicality it's really not my first choice. And my first choice is to have a two and a quarter petrol engine in this vehicle. So the two main reasons why this engine conversion is so common and works so well is that the first one is this is the closest engine to the two litre engine that was originally in the Series 1 because the Series 2 came out with a 2 litre engine. So it's just a couple of years after the Series 1. So from an authenticity point of view, it, it maintains a lot of that authenticity. And then secondly, this engine was produced for a very long time in Land Rovers. And it's easily one of the most common engines. It was very reliable, parts are easily available, and it is very easy to, to look after. And I'm also very familiar with this engine, and so that's why it's been my favourite uh, conversion. And so that's what I was always going to do. And I've now done that conversion. And unfortunately, I had to pay a bit of school fees because I didn't really do my homework properly. But that said, there really wasn't one place where I could find all the information about this conversion. I had to find out all sorts of bits and pieces from different people and at different times. And so what I've done in this video is put all of that information together. So this is a nice complete guide of how you can do the conversion from two liter to two and a quarter and all the things you need to consider. Also some of the shortcuts and some of the um, other parts that you can use from other vehicles in this conversion to make it easier and neater. So it's, a, it's not a definitive guide on this conversion, it's really just how I've done it. I've tried to, to do it with some of the most common methods and, uh, and that's what I'm gonna have a look at. So let's get into it and let me show you exactly how I did this conversion and how you can do it um, and not have to have all of the problems that I experienced. As much as these engines are so close in period and look similar at a glance, they are a bit different. The main difference seems to be obvious but can't be overlooked and it's the size of this 2.25 litre engine is ever so slightly taller and longer than the 2 litre. Then looking closer the carburetor and the distributor sit on opposite sides. Also, the 2 litre exhaust comes out sideways to the left, while the 2.25 litre engine exhaust goes downward. There are 8 main points to consider on the Land Rover Series 1 engine conversion, and they are Number 1 is change the bell housing on the gearbox to a 4 cylinder bolt pattern. Number 2 is to change the right hand side engine mounting to use the original 2 litre or 2.6 litre. The third thing is to change the radiator to a Series 2A or a 3 radiator and make the brackets fit to the front panel. Number four is to change the air filter battery bracket to a Series 2 or Series 3 type. Number five is to trim the carb adapter and the steel elbow to fit under the bonnet. Number six is to change the accelerator linkage to a Series 2 type with a down pull for a Zenith Weber and an up pull for a Solex. Number seven is to fit a Series 2109 exhaust and number eight is to plumb new fuel lines to use the 2.25 litre mechanical pump. Now let's have a look at all those in detail and see exactly what I did. The Series Land Rover gearboxes are mostly interchangeable. I used the original gearbox which is a bit weaker than the later Series 2A gearbox, but it is still compatible. I wanted to maintain more originality, so I used the original gearbox. Fitting the original gearbox to the 2.25 litre engine requires a change to the bell housing. 
Series Land Rovers only had two types of bell housing. There is a difference in the depth and the bolt pattern. The four-cylinder bell, four bell housing for the 2.25 litre has a bolt hole in the middle at the top in line with a gear lever, whereas the bell housing for the overhead valve engines and the six-cylinder only has uh, bolts on either side. The six-cylinder also has a hole in the starter motor housing bulge. Engine mounting points on the block are common, as well as the depth from the mounting points to the rear of the block. But what differs are the angle of the mounting brackets to the chassis. On the 107 chassis, the left-hand mounting bracket is identical and fits perfectly. However, the right-hand side mounting bracket needs to be changed. The angle of the original 2.25 litre engine mount is too steep and results in the engine mount being distorted. So, you need to use the original right-hand side mounting bracket from the 2.0-litre engine. This mounting is the same as that used on the later 2.6-litre cylinder engine and the, with the part number 239449. So these mounting points are still available if you don't have the original from the 2.0-litre engine. If you don't use this mounting, you are going to have to cut and weld metal to make it fit which is what you'd like to avoid. It's advisable to use a later Series 2 or Series 3 radiator for the 2.25 litre engine. If you don't do this, you may have less efficient cooling and will have to move the radiator forward. Because the 2.25 litre engine is longer, the space on the 86 inch and 107 inch chassis is too short. I have used a Series 3 radiator, which is thinner but taller. This allowed just enough space between the fan blades and the radiator. It is close, but it should work out. The Series 3 radiator fittings to the front panel are also different, so it won't just bolt onto the front panel. You will either have to bend the inside surfaces of the front panel, or you would need to manufacture two right angle brackets for the verticals and a flat bracket for the top mounting. I decided to use the brackets so that I didn't need to bend and alter the front radiator panel. Take note the Series 3 radiator is taller, so you can't just fit it flush with the front panel, as I discovered. You will need to drop the radiator about 25mm lower. This will allow the radiator cap to sit below the front panel and clear the bonnet. I also put in additional brackets to hold the radiator up, as my front panel is aluminium. These aluminium panels are weaker than this later steel ones. This panel is all that holds the radiator and the wings up. This load can be too much for the aluminium, and results in it breaking eventually. So by supporting the radiator on the chassis, I have strengthened this front panel. I was able to use the winch mounting holes in the cross member to fit the brackets. The Series 1 air filter for the 2.0-litre engine is shorter or lower than the 2.25-litre version and it has a smaller diameter opening. So you will need to use the air filter from a 2.25-litre engine as it has a higher airflow capacity which is better for the bigger engine. But the Series 1 bracket that it fits onto sits higher on the Series 1 chassis. So you also need a Series 2 bracket which sits lower and allows the taller air filter to fit under the bonnet. This one, this one over here is from my 107. So you can see that that's a little bit different because the, the air cleaner sits a little bit higher than this one is a Series 2 um, bracket which sits a little bit lower. So the air cleaner on the 107, the Series 1 is, is a little bit shorter. Um, and so now what I'm going to do, I was going to modify this bracket, but then I found out that I can just use uh, a Series 2 bracket because then I can use the normal um, Series 2 air cleaner because I'm putting a two and a quarter engine in. So, um, so I'll be able to do that without changing the, the old bracket. These two brackets are interchangeable, so you can swap them easily using the same four mounting bolts onto the chassis.
If you use the normal two and a quarter carburetor, carburetor setup, then once you have the air filter type fitted, it sits too high and the bonnet won't close properly. Okay, so now I'm just uh, fitting the air intake and um, this is a two and a quarter petrol, uh, which is now in the series one. And the problem that you've got is that uh, this, is, this whole setup is a little bit too high. So that when you close the bonnet, uh, it actually touches on the air cleaner. And you have to just adjust all of this so that you can get it fitting in. So you need to reduce the height of the whole assembly. This can be done by trimming the carb adapter that sits between the carb and the manifold. The original adapter can be trimmed by machining it down by a few millimeters. You also have to trim the steel elbow that connects to the air filter pipe to the carburetor by leaving just enough so that you can still attach the elbow to the carb with the rubber adapter. It's a bit of a fiddly adjustment that you'll just need to fit and see what you need to do to get it right. Just note that there are two types of elbows, a narrower version for the Weber and Zenith carbs and a wider version for the Solex carbs. If you can't get the right size for your carb, then you'll have to use a reducer adapter to make them fit to each other. And this is what I had to do, as I had a wider elbow that fitted onto the narrower carb, so I used a reducer to make it fit. The accelerator linkage is completely different because the carburetor sits on the opposite side of the engine. It is possible to use some of the original parts, but you'll need to get most of the Series 2 parts, including the cross shaft for the accelerator. These parts are fairly simple and easy to get. The more complicated part is the carburetor linkage. The bracket is the same, but the carburetor bell crank assembly, as it's called in the manual, is different. There are two types, one that pulls down and another that pulls up. You need to make sure that you have the right one for your carburetor setup. Um, in the way that it moves the, it moves up, so when it pulls, it pulls up like this. So it goes up and then this one works the other way and it pulls down, so the motion is, is that way. The earlier Solex pulls up, while the later Weber and Zenith pull down. The main difference between these two is the spring direction. If you try and use the wrong one, you will find that the spring is working in the wrong direction and deforms and doesn't work properly. The original 2 litre engine in the Series 1 has a side exhaust that comes out the left hand side of the engine through the left wing. The 2 and a quarter has an exhaust outlet that goes down in between the chassis rails so it's not possible to use the original exhaust configuration. Instead, you can use the Series 2 109 exhaust for a 107 or a 109, and the 88-inch exhaust for an 86 or an 88-inch Series 1. I found the clearance between the downpipe and the inside shackle plate and bolt to be very close, but it appears to just fit. The part numbers that I used for my 107 were... 517469 for the downpipe, 274141 for the intermediate pipe, and 562731 for the tailpipe. I also bought a very handy exhaust fitting kit from Britpart, part number DA1293, that has all the necessary bolts, nuts, bracket, and rubbers for fitting the entire exhaust, and makes the whole fitting exercise really simple. Okay, so the last uh, eighth and final change um, that you'll need to make is to the fuel lines, which is a minor change, but they do need to be adapted. The supply pipe from the fuel tank to the mechanical pump and the pipe from the pump to the carb is what you need. Here again, the, pump, the pipe from the Series 2 will fit, or you can just make up new ones with the correct fittings, which uh, again is what I did. Yeah, hopefully everything 
that I've put together um, for this video to show how, you know, what you need to look at when you do this, you know, conversions in general, but specifically this conversion to get everything to fit. It's, uh, it's so subtle and so small, but uh, if you don't uh, get it right up front, it just causes a lot of frustration and, and takes double the amount of time. So uh, yeah, do your homework first and make sure you get it right. Uh, and then, you know, it'll be plain sailing when you put it all together and it'll be easier. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have any tips and ideas that others will be able to benefit from, then please share them in the comments. And if you found this useful, then please like and subscribe. And if you think anyone else will find it useful, please share it. I'm making good progress on my rebuild and you can look forward to some more episodes in future where I get the wiring sorted out and start it up after a while and then get it ready to take it for that very first drive.